Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Thought today we'd just do a fantastic little scene that I hope you'll enjoy. Let's start out and have run all colors across the screen and just beat the devil out of it. Hi, hello. So, welcome to a brand new reading vlog. And this might be one of my funnest ones yet because I am channeling the emotion and creativity of the one, the only, our happy tree man himself, Bob Ross. <laughs> As you can see, I am in my blue button down. Bob Ross always wears a button down and I have decided that for the next 24 hours, I am going to read like Bob Ross. I have a specific TBR picked out with specific prompts and I am also going to channel my inner Bob Ross by following one of his tutorials or, you know, trying to at least. So let's start off with the books I've chosen and why I've chosen them. So in case you didn't know, Bob Ross was in the Air Force. So I chose a book that had to do with a pilot and that is The Little Prince. Now, if you watched any of my other videos, you know that I actually read this book in March and liked it, but had problems with the ending. And overall, I felt like I missed what I was supposed to. So because one of our main characters in the story is a pilot, I thought that it would be very appropriate in a way to pay homage to Bob Ross. The Little Prince follows the story of a little prince who lives on a planet. And then after having a frustrating time with his flower, he goes off and leaves it and kind of tries to find himself in the universe and ends up learning to appreciate what he has and it's really much deeper than you would think. So this is the first book that will be paying homage to our Air Force friend Bob Ross. Now you know that Bob Ross always says happy little trees. Of happy little trees. It's so nice just we'll just put a happy little tree right here <laughs> and so I just had to pick a book that I thought would make me incredibly happy. One that was kind of goofy and fun. I was looking at my shelf and I realized that I have never completely read Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. So it's time. It, I have to do it. And I feel like Bob Ross would approve of this. If you don't know, or for some reason you weren't reading these in elementary school, Where the Sidewalk Ends is a collection of silly, ridiculous, fun children's poems that I think Bob Ross would most certainly approve of. He'd call it a happy little book. And now the last book is a bigger book. It's a novel. And this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. <laughs> So I decided I was going to pick a book that has like a landscape on the front cover. Then I'm going to go through Bob Ross tutorials and pick the painting that best matches the cover that I've chosen. Of course, we know that Bob Ross is known for his landscape paintings and the book that I had that I thought had the best landscape painting was Beartown by Frederick Backman. Frederick Backman is the author of A Man Called Ove, which is one of my favorite books of all time, and I don't think that this book will disappoint me. Basically, it takes place in a small town that doesn't really have much going for it except for its junior hockey team, and the hockey team members feel a lot of pressure to do well, especially with the semifinals approaching, and that pressure kind of leads them to snapping. Apparently, all of that pressure leads to a really traumatizing event that takes place to the young girl in the town. So it's kind of a small town secrets type of books. Even though it has a lot to do with hockey, I think it's really more like a character study novel, which is my favorite. And let's look at the landscape. Isn't it pretty? We clearly have some nice mountains and hills. We've got some grass here and then lots of sky. So I used this as my inspiration and chose the painting view from Clear Creek. So I'll kind of do like a side by side so you can see their similarities, but that's the plan. Here's what we have to do. In this reading vlog, I'm going to be going through my TBR. So my happy little tree book, my landscape book and my air force book. And I'm going to be following the Bob Ross tutorial to paint View from Clear Creek, which looks similar to this cover here. I'm excited. I have no experience painting whatsoever, so that could end up going horribly wrong. I've only ever done watercolors before. I've never done oil painting, and especially not this wet on wet technique that Bob Ross is known for, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I have got a lot of reading to do. So 
I finished where the sidewalk ends and I thought that to really connect with this like younger version of myself who enjoyed the book, I would make an ice cream sundae with a cool waffle cone bowl and Neapolitan ice cream and some hot fudge, which I have heated already. Oh, you can also see my dishes in the background. That's gorgeous. Okay, I will be honest with you. This book does not age well. I don't know. I just found that a lot of it, whew, it's difficult. Um, <laughs> it was too cheesy. There were, so the thing about where the sidewalk ends is that sprinkled in between the bits of cheesiness and silliness, there are some really hard hitting poems. I'll probably flash some on the screen. Um, there was one actually that took my breath away. I'll read it to you. I've got ice cream in my fingers now. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it's this one, love. And it says, Ricky was L, but he's home with the flu. Lizzie, R, O, had some homework to do. Mitchell, E, probably got lost on the way. So I'm all of love that could make it today. I thought that was so beautiful because it's so true. Like sometimes we just cannot be present no matter how much we want to, but like it's okay even if we're not present one day and love is still there. Like I'm not here trying to analyze <laughs> Shel Silverstein poems, but there are some that are like surprisingly so beautiful. And then other ones that I'm just kind of like, for the most part actually just kind of are so silly <laughs> especially the long story ones that ramble they have like no point so yeah overall i felt like this book did not age very well i appreciate some things like the effort on rhyme and the illustrations and how they even bring out new parts of the story but it's not as special to me as it was to elementary school Kristen. And um, <laughs> I feel like even Bob Ross himself, he might like appreciate it, but I can't really call it a happy tree book. So I feel like I let Bob Ross down, but ugh, I just, I didn't like it. I'm not gonna rate it because this book is not for me. It's for children. So it would be unfair to really rate it. Um, <laughs> But overall, I don't feel bad having revisited it. Ooh. <laughs> and that is our first one down. So after I eat this wonderful ice cream and enjoy the sugar rush, then I will start on Little Prince and maybe we'll get to Beartown tonight too. I don't know. I guess we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> A whole chocolate spoon, oh my gosh. All right, it was fun making an ice cream sundae with you. So I'm only 10 pages into The Little Prince, but one thing that I love about this book that I loved the first time reading it and love now is how it highlights the wisdom of children over sometimes the foolishness of adults. And like it gives this example of like, if you see a beautiful house and you start, like a kid will describe, oh, it had these red bricks and these pretty trees and adults will just be like, how much was, does it cost? And if you say like, oh, $100,000 or something, they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a pretty house. Like, mm, the innocence of children. I know it's gonna make the rest of this story so much harder, but yeah, I love that. So many beautiful concepts covered in this book. I just finished a Little Prince and I think I think I understand it better than the first time that I read it. Meaning that like I get the ending now. For some reason I thought that like the little print maybe I'm just feeling more hopeful now. But this is such a sweet story. Honestly, it, it really is like a fable just filled with all of these lessons. I'm not going to critique this book because yeah, I could talk about like 
the part in the middle where he goes and sees the adults and all of that and like question why it's there but there's no need for that this story is beautiful full of important messages lyrical and i feel much more satisfied with the ending now i truly believe that the little prince was i'm happy i read it just to have this book redeemed for me and now i'm not going to read bear town i'm going to paint wish me luck <laughs> If this were a dry canvas, it'd be very difficult to put paint on this smooth. Maybe back in our world here, there's just a little mountain that lives right there. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Okay, so I guess you can probably see, but um, I attempted a Bob Ross painting. It <laughs> is, I guess, good for first try. I've never painted with oil paints before. And I just, the whole time I was like, I just have to make Mr. Ross proud. I just have to, to please him. And I don't think that he would be pleased, but you know, at least I tried. So I'll let you take a look at it. I really hope you've enjoyed this little painting. It's one of the most simple paintings you'll ever come across, and you can do it. Hello, <laughs> it's the next day. It's a rainy day, which is actually perfect for what I have planned. I've just got back from my jog, and uh, my hair's still wet, clearly. But that's okay, because we don't care about those types of things on this channel. That doesn't matter. What matters is books. And speaking of, I have started Beartown. So I started Beartown on script, listening to the audiobook. I was so happy to find it. They had the audiobook and the ebook version, which is super nice. And yeah, I can go ahead and tell you that I'm going to love this story. It reminds me of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng because of the small town like secrets type of vibe and like a character study. We've got lots of different character perspectives and I have just honestly been so hungry for an adult fiction novel. I love Frederick Bachman's writing style and what he does with characters is amazing. So yes, we're going to just sit and read for a while and forget the world. And I'm probably going to turn on some mountain music <laughs> and just drink my coffee and read. I know I say this about basically every book that I read and give five stars, but I think this is my favorite book. 
I honestly think that this may be one of the best books I have ever read and it could possibly be my new favorite book of all time. And here's why. <laughs> This book is so much more than a story about hockey. It is about the complicated lives of people in a town. There are so many reasons why I love this book. I think one reason is the fact that it's written in these short vignettes, like very short passages and point of view switches. And at first I thought that would be jarring, but as I mentioned earlier, you get so many different perspectives in this book that I really felt like I got to know the whole town, but that's just scratching the surface. Another amazing thing about this book is its rawness. Um, Bachman is unlike any other author I have read at really portraying a character in A Man Called Ove. You have this character who is so complex um, but so good. And you see that through the character's actions and dialogue. And I think that it's just the same in Beartown. Bachman is one of those authors who understands that a reader is smart and lets the reader figure out things on their own. These like very subtle sentences and, and hints could almost skip your notice and change the meaning of a story if you didn't catch it. And I love that, that Bachman trusts the reader to catch it or regardless tells the story in such a beautiful way. Another reason why I love this story is because your whole perspective ends up changing as you read it based off of the events that take place in the story and i think that the fact that like i went from really supporting some people in the story to completely loathing them with my entire being shows you the type of accuracy and poignancy that bachman brought to the story and to the characters and there's this one character named benji who is just so wonderful in every single way. I loved the ending of the story. It tied things up in a nice way while also kind of letting you imagine how things would end. Definitely um, check the trigger warnings because this story is raw and gritty, but it is also beautiful and I think really encapsulates like these small town vibes and really makes you re rethink what bravery is and consists of, what loyalty is. I feel like after reading this book, Frederick Bachman might be my new favorite author. Like now I feel like I have to read everything that he's written because I already have always included A Man Called Ove in one of my favorite books of all time and now I've read this and I'm just, I think I'm gonna have to read everything he's ever written. And I'm so here for that. So now you've got my thoughts on Beartown, my 1 a.m. rambling, gushing thoughts on Beartown. And I think we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna get our final thoughts on all the books and wrap up this vlog. Thought it would be fitting to sit in front of the painting. Hello, Lucy Pevensey here, student of the famous painter, Bob Ross, to give you my final and most concluding thoughts on the books that I read whenever I attempted to read like Bob Ross for 48 hours. It ended up being almost 50 hours. I went a little bit over, but hey, I read a lot in that time and I'm proud of it. If you follow me on Goodreads, you will see that I have now added every single novel by Frederick Bachman to my TBR. If you see that, don't worry. It's just because I have no chill and I am obsessed with this author. So, out of the three books I read, Where the Sidewalk Ends, which was my Happy Little Tree book, Little Prince, which was my homage to the Air Force book, <laughs> and Bear Town, my landscape book, I think you can guess which one was my favorite, Bear Town. Ranging from the poignant and spot on character depth and portrayal in this story, the succinct and raw writing and the level of conflict, the framing of the story with the vignettes. And I didn't even mention the fact that um, 
Periodically, he uses this like re repetition of the word like bang to build tension. He's just, it's masterfully told. It's beautiful. We love Bear Town. <laughs> so clearly this one wins. And now I feel like the fact that I chose to paint a Bob Ross painting inspired by this book just makes me feel even more like happy and delighted. I'll have it on my wall forever and I'll always think of Bear Town. So yes, Bear Town wins first place. Now to give our second place award, that will be going to clearly the Little Prince by Antoine de saint -Esupery. It was wonderful to revisit the story for a second time, and I'm glad that I did because I ended up seeing the ending in a totally different perspective, and I really see it all more hopefully. So yeah, I'm happy for that and for all the lessons that this little book teaches us. And then in third place, but still a valid and good book, is... Where the sidewalk ends, though its silliness is too much for me, I do appreciate the moments where it gets very profound without you expecting it. <laughs> and yeah, there you have it. I read some books like Bob Ross and of course, Mr. Bob did not let me down. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure that you hit the like button in the comments below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts on them are. Uh, you can let me know what you thought of my painting. I know it was kind of garbage, but you know. I'd love to know your experiences with Bob Ross, anything like that. If you like this style of vlog, let me know. I do have some ideas for some future vlogs in this kind of fashion, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday and sometimes Mondays when I have no chill, which is often. Also, if you would like to try out the digital reading app Scribd, which is where I read a lot of Beartown actually, and listen to the audiobook too, then you can get your first two months free using my link in the description box below. But yeah, that is going to be it for now, book flowers. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.